laser shot Sim 7 pistol and the next level training shot indicating resetting trigger or CERT 110 pistol. Both of these attempt to simulate the Glock 17 slash 22 pistol. I'm going to go over what sucks about them and what's great about them and which company hits the mark a little bit closer. I've owned both of these pistols for about a year and a half now. They both have tens of thousands of trigger pulls on them and they've been thrown on the ground multiple times by tiny humans. They're both very durable. Before I get too deep into the weeds in this, I just want to say that I'm not sponsored by either of these companies. I paid for both these pistols myself. I'm going to be talking a lot more in this video about the Sim 7 and the CERT just because there's not as much information online about it. I think at the time there's still only like two videos online uh, from the retailers. So I want to give it a little bit more detail and attention because I think there's some good things about it. There's also some horrible things. If you want the spark notes of this video, someone needs to take the bottom half of the red gun and the top half of the blue gun, make a purple gun, it'll be awesome. Anyways. The Sim 7 pistol I think is still raining in about 75 to 100 bucks more than the metal CERT 110. Uh, that being said though, you do have to purchase a infrared module as seen here uh, if you're going to be running a simulator to get any worthwhile usage of either of these pistols. I purchased the Sim 7 pistol in the red laser option, which is pretty stupid. If you're going to buy it, get the IR module right off the bat. It's entirely worthwhile if you're using it for a simulator. Anyway, let's get into this. We're purchasing both of these pistols to get as close of a simulation to our duty or competition firearms as possible. And arguably the most important point for dry fire would be to have a perfect trigger pull in comparison to your duty or competition firearm. Unfortunately, neither of these pistols really nail that in terms of replicating the stock Glock trigger. For comparison, this is a stock Gen 5 Glock trigger. That's the take up, the brake, this is the reset. This is a agency arm syndicate trigger. And the reset. And the Sim 7. Which feels kind of like a Glock with a minus connector and some mushy over travel and pre travel. This was supposed to be the big selling feature of the Sim 7. Their website says it's a true to life trigger with weight, take up, break, and reset. They hit about 70% of that, which kind of sucks because there's a billion aftermarket Glock triggers out there that still feel like Glock triggers. Now, the CERT doesn't actually have quite as nice of a trigger break as the Sim 7. That being said, it's adjustable. I've adjusted it pretty close to the Agency Arm Syndicate trigger. So if you have a competition Glock, you can adjust it to whatever trigger you have in there and hit it to you know 80% of the trigger feel but it's not exact. Out of the box, it feels worse than the Sim 7 if you're going for that stock Glock feel. However, the Sim 7 doesn't hit the stock Glock feel, nor can it hit any competition Glock feel either. That's about a five pound trigger pull for the stock CERT. Now, it also has a very repeatable trigger reset. The Sim 7 is actually pretty inconsistent with the trigger reset. Sometimes you can be pulling the trigger and trying to pull from the reset point and it actually misses, it doesn't reset the trigger. The Sim 7 is breaking around 4 pounds. That's even less than a Glock trigger with a minus connector. Unless your Glock also has the 25 cent trigger job. But with this being a non-adjustable trigger, I think we've kind of missed the mark here for Liu and Mill if we're purchasing this pistol to act as a simulator for our duty firearms. As you can see here, our Glock 43 stock isn't getting anywhere close to 4 pounds, nor is the stock Glock Gen 5 trigger. Anyway, the triggers both leave a lot to be desired. Let's talk about some manipulations. Here is the CERT 110, just doing some reloads and some draws. This is from a level 3 duty holster. It's a Safari Land 6360. These feel pretty darn similar to a Gen 4 Glock with no flared magwell and with the perfect weight of the magazines there. Again, CERT has adjustable uh, weight magazines. But we got no cool slide lock with the Sim 7. What we do have is these disgusting abomination of a magazine. It's about two-thirds the size of a real Glock magazine. It's completely hollow and weightless, and it doesn't even fit in a magazine pouch. But hey, a rackable slide is pretty cool. Here I'm displaying to you why having a magazine that's not a full size length is a pretty significant problem. I don't know what the purpose of having a removable magazine was if you're not even going to attempt to replicate the real deal. 
But I do have to give them props on the slide. They absolutely nailed the weight and feel of racking the slide in this firearm. It feels delicious. Something really cool that you can also do with the slide here is with the slide racked to the rear, you can still actuate the trigger and send a laser down range. So you can do cool things like this. But unfortunately, if you don't have a magazine that's worth doing reloads with, then there's not really a purpose of having a working slide either. The magazine also doesn't drop free due to the weight. Um, I did end up duct taping some like loose projectiles inside of it to give it some weight so it drops, but even then it's not consistent. The reason I put that entire sequence in there is you can observe how many times I missed the magwell and pinched my finger, which is extremely frustrating. The, the magazine just sucks, that's the bottom line. So for you guys that are looking to purchase either of these pistols for a duty rig, uh, such as the Safari Land, probably the most common duty rig out there with the SLS ALS configuration. Uh, this is a pretty shocking thing here to see that both of these pistols don't lock into the ALS and don't fit the holsters very well at all. Now the SLS hood just barely engages on the cert and it doesn't at all in the same set. That being said, neither of these pistols are going to fall out of your duty holster if you're just running around with them. Uh, but it's not allowing the holster to function properly. Let's check out some other pictures. The Gen 5 Blade Tech Classic. Doesn't quite push in all the way. Screws are fully loosened off. Same with the CERT. Gen 4 Blade Tech Classic. Clips in nicely. And clips in nicely. Safari Land 7TS. Doesn't activate the ALS. Beautiful. Very firm in there. And activates the ALS no problem. Safari Land 6360. Doesn't activate the ALS can get the SLS hold hood over but it's not activating. Yeesh. ALS not activating. You can get SLS over but this is a hot dog in the hallway. And before you say it's the light, this is a Gen 5 17. And that clips in with the ALS and the SLS. Tier 1 axis slim, cut for a Glock 19X. A little bit tight on the love handles again. A lot tighter on the cert. Doesn't even cover the trigger guard. Cherry's deep concealment holster. Clips in, pretty loose. Really loose in the cert. Alright, the full size 17 is what we're trying to emulate and weight. Nailed it. Alright, bought a scale just for this. This is simulating that all of these pistols are loaded. So this is the Glock 17 with a loaded magazine. Glock 19 with some accessories and a loaded magazine. And a Glock 43 with a Canadian barrel. And this is all the weights in pounds, so my house doesn't get burned down. Alright, how do these guns actually perform? This is the CERT pistol going through an El Presidente drill on the smokeless range. Unfortunately not the point blank simulator yet. Will be soon. And this is the Sim 7 pistol doing the same thing. Obviously, the consistent magazine change problems because the magazine sucks. Uh, you're going to get that... 50% of the time where you miss that magwell. Um, obviously too here, this is an anecdotal kind of thing because I can't run each drill to 100% of my capabilities. So it's going to be kind of a unreliable representation between these two pistols. You can see it's not picking up every hit as well. Uh, that's a lot to do with the red laser instead of IR. Uh, but the trigger reset also is an issue on the Sim 7. It's not entirely consistent and sometimes the laser will go off 
before you've actually reset the trigger. Even without a weighted magazine in the Sim 7, it does still feel a little bit truer to the actual Glock in terms of the balance of the weight and how it transitions on target. The CERT, however, gives you the opportunity to do your mag changes in between your array of targets, and you can even use uh, aftermarket magazines like ETS mags. Uh, Glock mags also work, but they're a little bit tight in there and they'll drop free. And this just shows you the consistency of both the Sim 7 and the CERT. Uh, they're plenty accurate enough to be able to actually run through all these simulations. Um, clearly, as we were running through the, the drills beforehand, it was me missing, not the gun. That's just what this is showing. Okay, weird transition there, bro. This is just showing the aftermarket sights. The Sim 7 comes with metal sights out of the box, um, but both pistols have removable sights. The grip on the Sim 7 is pretty bad. Um, I did some poor stippling job there to add a little bit more grip because it's extremely slippery out of the factory. Um, the CERT definitely beats it in that category. And just another quick reminder that the Sim 7 mag is absolute garbage. Probably would have been better if they would have just sealed the bottom of the pistol shut. Which is unfortunate because the slide is awesome. It's a really cool feature on the gun, but it's just not entirely feasible to use because the magazine sucks so much. Now you'll see in a couple of minutes here my immeasurable disappointment when I opened the box and found this disgusting thing inside the gun. Um, that being said, the trigger is okay. It needs some refinement, and I think in a couple of years they might actually be onto something. That being said, uh, you know, a cool fire trainer exists, and that's your real Glock. So I think the triggers on both these pistols need to catch up to compete with that. If I had to pick one of these pistols right now, it would be the CERT. And that's because the trigger is more repeatable, it's consistent, even though it doesn't have as crisp of a break. The magazine changes are a huge bonus, because that's a lot of what we're doing with competition shooting. The only thing that's missing is that awesome Sim 7 slide. If they could have a baby and make that purple pistol, it'd be pretty sweet. So here's hoping for that. Alright, well, if you guys made it this far through my babbling, I do appreciate that. I'm just going to play about a five-minute uh, unboxing video of the Sim 7 now from when I got it back in uh, the summer of 2019. And you can see what you get in the box, and you can watch me go through the horrific zeroing process. Enjoy. Thanks. Nice. Yeah, you know what? Side note, I mean, these are $19 in America. And they are $79.99 in Canada. Alright, this needs to be opened in a more fitting place. Tactical snaps. Ooh. Ooh. Feels pretty loose. Magazine doesn't drop free. That's interesting. No, that's not very satisfying. Wow. Yeah. That's like a short story on my slide. So, I'm hoping that this will not suck. Huh. I don't know if that should be sticking on me. Feels pretty sturdy, other than, uh, you know, that. So I've been sitting here for the last 30... So when this came out of the box, it was shooting up to the left. You can see those four screws. The instruction manual says to tighten one and loosen the other on the corresponding side. But as you can see, they're not directly across from each other. Not even close. So that's unfortunate. Oh, this is such a bad design. <laughs> now she's shooting high right. I need to push the laser left, which means I need to extend this screw. And I can't fully extend it because it's pushing into the vertical screw, which I have already set up perfectly. I'm actually not done complaining about this. Look at that, come on. The grip is just so darn slippery, like there is just nothing to it. Doesn't feel very good. The spring in there, that feels like a real Glock. Slack, wall, smush, snap, reset.